All right, I've got three packages here today. Let's actually begin with this one on the bottom because this one would be the non-anime portion of this. Oh. That would be uh, Logan, the newer movie that came out. That's uh, hmm. no, it's just the plastic kind of shiny underneath. Um, that was a pretty good movie. This one, unfortunately, or, or fortunately, it arrived. I mean, that's what I said before, but I didn't know if I enunciated correctly. Because um, this one uh, updated earlier today saying it was delayed, even though it had arrived in town. So I assumed maybe it didn't get on the truck or something, but it got, del it got delivered, no problem. And then we got this, and then last but not least, we have uh, Little Witch Academia Volume 2. And Thunder. Hopefully the lights don't go out while I'm doing this or anything like that. Not that they ever have, it's just, you know, always possible. So as you can see, as usual, it's uh, full of moon speak. Because it's imported from Japan, which, as you all know, is located on the moon. In one... Gundam of some sort, I think. I think that's a Gundam reference. Meanwhile, in here we have more Little Witch Academia. My guess is two or three episodes. I wonder, did it actually say so on here? And I never forget a bleeding heart is your magic. So I don't think that's a list of episodes. This could be down here Nightfall, Pact of the Dragon, and the Fountain. Dragon sounds cool. That was in the first Little Witch Academia. Maybe a list of three episodes there, or it's all Japanese, so I can't tell, anyways. Some good artwork. In the sleeve here, we of course have more stuff. hard to get this these very thin pieces of paper off the table. These are the two cards it came with. Well, these are probably the neatest thing about it, even though I can't read a thing about it. It's interesting that they seem to have power and toughnesses, sort of like Magic the Gathering, but I don't know if that's actually what those are. Oh well, can't question it too much. Uh, next up, I guess at the top of this pile, is a DBZ Kai Part 2. Part 1 came out? There's a total of three parts for these, right? Oh, Fusion Dance. Hopefully the camera's picking up the nice rain outside. Um, I'm not... Oh, let's see. Region A should be English audio. If it didn't, it'd be weird. Uh, go tanks. Boo. Um, three discs. Well, the DVD version. Sin. Art. You can see Boo a little bit better. And four discs. Three, four. But there's four discs. All right. Well, that, that's this is moving along nice and rapidly. The BBC Kai final chapters thing. Uh, next up, we've got um, Momo Kuri Blu-ray and DVD versions. Uh, this looks like this is Japanese with English subtitles only. It's a curiosity. I remember this one said it was an ONA. That's probably why there's 26 episodes, so they're shorter in length. Um, they could be half episodes, 26 half. 
length episodes. You know, under the assumption that 20 minutes for or 25, whichever, for a 30 minute slot is full. Hmm. This one, region A, no difference. You just always gotta check, I guess. You never know when you're gonna run into. That's 18 episodes. And then the remaining somethings. Oh, look. There's actually. Is that two more characters? Yeah, I think so, because she has her bangs down and she has them split. Oh, and she's purple eyed, I think. Maybe brown eyed. She's red eyed. Maybe brown eyed. I don't know. <clears throat> Same. Same. This one appears to be different. Oh, look, there's even more characters. So there's actually characters. What that means, I don't know. And most of these are girls, I couldn't help but notice. Not sure if that's a, um... <clears throat> advertising thing, or... And, uh, last, but I don't know if least... I'm trying to think, because I'm kind of curious about the show. I see it's dubbed, which means... I'm probably going to fire it up just because... I'm in between shows, and throwing up a dub is easier than something subbed, although um, there's a couple that I'm curious about that are in the more immediate piles and uh, I'm not getting to any of the damn piles. I guess before I go too much further, oh yeah, that is coming off. Okay. I don't know who these characters are. She reminds me of um, those little girl things from Mega Man Legends 2. I don't know I don't remember what they were called. All these other people, I don't know. I'm not even quite sure if that's a guy or a girl. Kind of androgynous. Usually a fun thing. Although, also, very commonly, um... Hmm. Feels a little loose in there. The others feel a little tighter, but... No, no big loss. We got uh, DVDs one and two, and the Blu-rays one and two. And now over here, it says art cards. Thou art art cards. Somebody open. I guess let's take a peek at them. See if there's any, any difference. Since anime art tends to be one of the positives of purchasing. It's just a wide variety of characters here. I'm not even quite sure if I'm seeing duplicates of some of these characters. Like, is that the same character? I recognize androgynous person who I think looks like a guy, but I've seen female anime characters drawn that way before, so I don't want to bet either way. If the anime makes fun of that, that would be highly appropriate, because that has happened before, where I've, um... And I guess I'm going to see, can I... Ooh, look at that. It fit right in there. And now you don't even know it's there. And if I turn it this way, we'll actually get a title. So, um... This week's Anime DVD Collection Update. Well, uh, finished Valkyrie Drive. I'm not sure if I have too much more to say. Obviously, there's a question of what I thought about the ending. And I kind of felt like... Maybe some of the elements that took place in the show felt a little disjointed. Like, things weren't completely out of the blue, but it's like some elements were introduced, but they don't really have a lot to do with emotional investment you may or may not have at the beginning of the series per se. And it's interesting because it seems like this series is kind of where that blonde girl sometimes needs to be that strong, silent warrior type. And she'll sometimes go into it for brief periods of time, but then they get a little expositional, I guess. It's weird. And <clears throat> finishing it wasn't as disappointing as starting it and saying, oh, well, it has these elements that it could have done good things with, but didn't. Because, you know, once you're finishing it, it just is what it is. So overall, eh, it's not the greatest. I could understand why some people would love it. 
but I'm definitely not one of those people. Next up, I decided to watch the Aji, which I guess this is my first Netflix anime to watch, where Netflix has um, tried to fund or something a couple of anime, or maybe they had airing deals, and I guess Knights of Sidonia is one of those, and I haven't seen that yet, even though I've had those DVDs, Blu-rays forever. But Ajin was another one, and it's kind of interesting because while I haven't watched a lot of Netflix series, there is one I have watched, which is, of course, Stranger Things. And it's kind of relevant because I couldn't help but feel like one of the weaknesses of Stranger Things, which isn't really saying that much considering that it is just overpowered by a lot of really awesome things. Um, I didn't really like how Stranger Things kind of eventually had the monster becoming a raw monster. And it might tie into what they plan to do with the second season a bit more. So it doesn't really detract from it so much as... I don't know. There's a part of me that really enjoyed some of those creepy, ambiguous -y creature sort of things like what you saw in the first episode, which uh, I bring up because the shadowy Ajin things that uh, you can kind of see on there are, they, they kind of remind me of it, except that they kind of maintain that kind of creepiness other than the fact that this is a, um, I guess one of those edgy, violent-y shows, kind of like Parasite or um, something like that. So, <clears throat> They're not going for, it's a creepy thing, i.e. you should be scared of it so much as it's a creepy thing as in the behaviors, the things they allow people to do, etc. are kind of uh, supposed to be a little unnerving, I think might be the right word. Not entirely. So, the, the show actually explores some interesting stuff there. Um... If there was anything I could complain about, it would be that it felt like it could be paced a little bit faster and be more enjoyable, maybe, for some elements of it. I mean, <clears throat> I guess I don't want to talk about some stuff because it's really easy to spoil this one. Yeah, overall, I thought it was pretty good. It doesn't end at an ending, which is no surprising because I think there's a second season. And this comes with a movie, but when I was checking out on Mal, it sounds like that's a summary of the season that just happened, which could mean that actually the pacing for the movie might be pretty damn good. I'm not sure because I didn't feel like re-watching the show immediately. If I show it with, to a friend, I might nominate the movie as a way to try to watch it. But a movie feels like it could also be paced a little fast. I don't know. Maybe if it's like a two and a half hour movie, maybe it would be fine. I don't know. Overall, I thought it was um, pretty neat. It's... I guess there's also one feeling I didn't quite like about it, which was uh, some Animal Farm 1984-ish obvious propaganda is obvious sort of thing going on. But, I don't know, that's that's a pretty common thing that you'll just see in these shows where, oh, our main character is having to deal with a supernatural evil niche thing. I think mo maybe more like Tokyo Ghoul than like um, Parasite per se, because Parasite, well, no, it's got some kind of whatever. Anyways, and then um, I watched a uh, the Seven Deadly Sins. I was about to say Fairy Tale, but obviously this is Seven Deadly Sins and not Fairy Tale. Although, it's kind of interesting because it was kind of hard to put my finger on it, but it kind of felt somewhat similar. And I think it's could be the character designs, could just be the bright and colorful universe. Maybe it was also reminding me a little bit of um, not exactly One Piece, but maybe more Tokyo, Tor Toriko. Whatever the one that's um, had crossovers with One Piece and featured food cooking sort of stuff. Basically, <clears throat> I guess there was a very shonen jumpy sort of feel to the construct of things where it felt like, and it never quite did, but it kind of felt like it would sidetrack from whatever main thing it was setting up 
to have, uh, oh, now they have to fight people in a tournament sort of thing. And it kind of has done that, but kind of hasn't done that. It's hard to tell if it's going to be a long-running show or if it really does have a focused point. It, it feels very ambiguous right now which of those it's aiming for because it kind of has some elements of it that I'm having trouble verbalizing that kind of felt along those lines. But outside of that, it's actually got some pretty neat characters. Maybe character designs is the appropriate word. Um, I wouldn't say that I would call the characters appearances great since that's kind of ambiguous and could maybe be interpreted uh, in a different way like I wouldn't say they look spectacular they look fun it's a, they're fun character designs <clears throat> mm, I'm wondering if I can give really good examples of some of the stuff but I don't know. And I think part of the element that, that's going on there is they establish in the beginning that this is before humans and mystical worlds separated on their own, I guess, or something like that. So there's mystical elements mixed in that don't exactly feel like them when you first look at them. They do and they don't at the same time, so it's interesting. Um... Although, I do have to say, there are a couple characters I don't like, and I guess it's because the, the show tries to say, oh, well, they're actually good people, but, well, one of them was ready to kill a friend because of assumptions he himself jumped to, and that doesn't really strike me as a really good person. It's the kind of person you would expect to find lynching a... Uh, black men in the 1930s or 40s or whatever because uh, some woman said that uh, she she was raped by him or something and you know that's like to kill a mockingbird or something like that and if you're jumping to conclusions without proof and then just being willing to attack people it's that, that, that I don't consider that a good thing so he kind of soured himself a little bit there because that was kind of his character introduction. And then there's another character who, of course, just believes stupid shit she's been told without actually checking to see if that's what actually is the reality. So both of them are kind of... They fall into the same bucket of pieces of shit who do horrible things because they don't question reality and remain critical of it. And I don't know. That's just, it didn't ruin the series. The characters, it's still neat to have them around. <clears throat> it's just, I guess that kind of touched onto a pet peeve, perhaps? I don't know. Uh, outside of that, I'm not sure if I've really done much of anything else. My friend finished watching Scrapped Princess. Another friend finished watching One Punch Man. And Scrap Princess ends okay. You kind of feel satisfied as in, like, you don't feel like you need to uh, Scrap Princess 2 or something like that. But at the same time, I guess there's some things that you would have hoped got resolved, but they kind of felt like they suddenly were rushed near the end there, I guess. Whereas One Punch Man, of course, is pretty great and I'm certainly looking forward to a second season because I could see a lot of potential there. And it's kind of making me think of and revisit bits and pieces of other anime which are about main characters being for all intents and purposes gods. Which Seven Deadly Sins may or may not be in there. It's hard to say because it seems to be going in and out depending on circumstance or as it goes and I really won't know which it is until it gets to the end which is an interesting thing but you know that does mean like revisiting Overlord and I've been wanting to fire up some scenes from Helsing Ultimate just not quite sure which ones you know these are they're interesting shows because they all deal with the problem of um, the Superman story I guess because like Superman can be kind of hard to write for just because 
he's supposed to be perfect and able to do anything. And you can even see some of this with some, I'm not sure about comics, but some newer stuff where Kryptonite being Superman's only weakness was not very interesting story-wise. So they introduced, I think, magic as a weakness for Superman. And then I remember a clip where they showed that he just kind of toughed out some guy using magic so that he could save the world or something like that. And that seems to kind of contradict the point of introducing it in the first place, which, you know, is a problem that comes from having multiple writers, but, yeah. And I guess the issue there is, of course, when you create an invincible character, how do you um, do something entertaining with it? And Superman's problem in that regard is really just more how well-defined a character he is, so it's kind of hard to catch people by surprise, I guess, and come up with different angles without feeling like they're milking the um, franchise, I guess. So, that's why some of these other things, which are like, well, here's one where um, the character is morally ambiguous. Or One Punch Man, um, where basically it's all about superheroes, period. Like, just kind of for multi-angles, because they introduce the idea of the classes, and then each class seems to kind of generally represent something for the storytellers to be able to approach. So at the same time, you can make fun of powerful superheroes, and you can have straightforward, awesome superheroes who are also powerful. And then you can have um, people on the opposite end of the spectrum who are basically just regular Joes, and what they do to help people and inspire people, and also just how little they can do. So you kind of have it going both ways, where you feel like it's good to have them, but there's these situations where they're not helpful. And it kind of feels the same with the Class S. And, you know, you got all these mixing, contradictory things. And so the entire idea of One Punch Man is, even though you've got this Superman character, who's just, you know, presented as completely unbeatable no matter what, um, it means you can have... <clears throat> you can have people wanting to watch it for other reasons. And one of those big things I think that comes up is the whole uh, other people raising, holy shit, what in the world are we seeing here? This is mind-boggling. Basically, kind of a... It could probably be like a... Um, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, so I'm not going to make that point. But stuff like that can be really fun. And One Punch Man balances all of it very well. And why am I still talking about One Punch Man? I should just um, let y'all go because um, I'm not sure I really have a whole lot else to talk about. So y'all, have a nice week.